The spring buying season is almost here, so if you're torn between whether you buy a single family home or a condo, watch this video to find out which option might be the better one for you. I'm Mike Feldman with Bond Real Estate at Compass, and I specialize in helping buyers and sellers in Central Indiana. So today's video is about the differences between condos and single family homes and how to decide which option might be the best for you. So if you find this video helpful, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get alerted of all of my future videos. Now there's a couple factors that play into whether buying a single family home or a condo is best for you. And one of those factors is not the price. So at least here in Indiana, whether your budget is $100,000 or a $1 million, you're gonna have options in both categories. In fact, one of the most expensive sales in all of Indiana ever has been a condo at $4.4 million. So price usually doesn't uh, dictate which option is the best for you. So the two factors that usually dictate uh, which option is the best for you is geographic location and lifestyle. So I'm gonna talk about both right now. So let's talk about geographic location first. So condos are normally found in more densely populated areas, which are usually located near or right in a downtown sort of area. So that being said, condos are often, just generally speaking, often more walkable to shops, restaurants, grocery stores, things of that sort. While single family homes are usually in a neighborhood and that neighborhood is usually a little bit more spread out. So again, generally speaking, a single family home is not gonna have as close of walkability as a condo does to certain amenities like shops, restaurants, grocery stores, and that sort of thing. So if walkability is super important to you, then that right there will probably lean you a little bit more towards the condo lifestyle. On the flip side are single family homes. And the difference between those and condos is that because you don't share any walls with with anybody else like you do with a condo, you're completely responsible for maintaining and paying for the exterior of the property as well as the utility costs of that property. But that also means you'll probably have a yard, which also means you have a yard to take care of. So if you have kids or pets, or maybe you just enjoy gardening and um, maintaining the landscaping of a property, then a single family home might be the best route for you. So there are a lot of homes that are in neighborhoods that don't have an HOA, but if it does have an HOA, then relatively speaking, the HOA fee um, is going to be pretty nominal. So sometimes it's a monthly fee, sometimes it's a, just a quarterly fee. There are some HOAs that just have a one-time yearly fee. But generally speaking, the HOA fee is going to be pretty nominal. If it is a little bit higher, um, it's still never going to be as close to a condo uh, HOA fee. But if a neighborhood's HOA fee is on the higher side, then it's usually because there's a lot to maintain or there's a lot of amenities like a pool, clubhouse, playground, that sort of thing. Now this is a pretty vague breakdown of some things to think about when deciding which option might work the best for you. And there are some other options like a townhome or a low maintenance community that sort of blend the benefits of both a single family home and a condo. So if you yourself are looking to buy this year and want to have a more specific conversation about which option might work the best for you and your lifestyle, then all my contact info is below. And until next time, thank you for watching.